our headquarters in Des Moines. And would you help me as state chair welcome the next president of the United States, Governor Mike Huckabee. Thank you. Thank you. Let me say first thanks to all of you for coming out uh, here on the middle of a beautiful day in Iowa for us to uh, open our Des Moines and Iowa headquarters. We're thrilled to be here. And uh, obviously by uh, coming to Des Moines and opening up a headquarters, we have uh, put a flag in the ground and said we're serious, we're here to stay, and we're here to play. And we're uh, excited about the prospects of uh, what this campaign can do in Iowa because we still believe that the people of America, and uh, including the people of Iowa, are looking at, for a candidate that they can believe in, that they can get behind, that they can trust to be consistent and trust to be authentic. And that's why the opening of this headquarters is, uh, we think, the beginning of going to be a long march uh, through the next several months all the way to the Iowa caucuses. I still believe that the Iowa caucuses, the New Hampshire primary, the South Carolina primaries, these early dates are a critical part of the process. And they're an important part, uh, not just for you and Iowa, but for the rest of the country. And the reason is, is because if somebody's going to be president of the United States, that person ought to have to come out and sit down and talk to people who live real lives, not the uh, sort of the fantasy lives of uh, people who live in Washington, but the real lives of folks who every day are worried about how they're going to pay for gasoline to get to and from work, who are concerned about the simply paying their rent, making sure they can take care of their child if he breaks his arm on the playground because they're not sure what kind of health care they can access. Those are issues that every day people not just in Iowa, but across this country, face and they feel. And sometimes there's a, there's a tendency to let the national media suck off on the East Coast, anoint candidates, and decide who you're going to vote for. Well, I've said for a long time, this isn't let's make a deal with Monty Hall standing in front of uh, three doors with Carol Merrill pointing and saying you have choice A, B, or C. There are more choices. And today we open this headquarter to give the people of Iowa and the people of America uh, a choice they can really count on. And when they open the door behind this headquarters, uh, they're going to find that it's not a zonk. It's a good deal. And we're excited to be here. It's going to be a, a long haul. I know the summers uh, in Iowa are not quite as hot as they are in Arkansas. So maybe we're uh, going to be looking forward to a nice, cool, pleasant uh, summer with lots of sweet corn and uh, lots of good people. And we're happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to visiting with you. I know there'll be some folks uh, here from uh, the media that have some questions, and I'll be happy to take those for a few moments. But let me just say thank you for coming today, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on the campaign trail all through Iowa. God bless you for coming out today. We've always planned to be in the straw poll. That's been part of our strategy, uh, and we have no reason uh, right now to uh, to think otherwise. We we know that things have changed since last week, and, and we were all, I think, stunned by the uh, decision of the Giuliani and uh, McCain campaigns to uh, to pull out and not to, to participate. Um, we don't know really yet, I don't think any more than anybody else, the other candidates of the state party knows what this means. Uh, for the impact of the straw poll. So, uh, you know, we, we, we have to weigh that carefully, but uh, we've always had the intention to, to play and, uh, you know, to win. So uh, we'll just, you know, take it day at a time, but um, we didn't open this headquarters here to, uh, to leave Iowa, and we didn't open a headquarters here today because we weren't interested in what this state would mean for us along the way. So is that a maybe? No, it, I mean, I'm just giving you the honest answer is that uh, we have every intention, but, you know, we don't know. If, if, if the straw poll, uh, if the manner in which it's carried out is one that helps us in Iowa and helps us uh, toward both the caucuses and toward the national platform, then we'd be, uh, you know, absolutely compelled to. But if the disappearance, if the fact that the two so-called leading candidates have pulled out completely changes everything, then certainly, you know, we, we're not going to spend resources and time if it doesn't have the meaning that it needs to have for us and for the party and for the people of, of the state. When will you make that determination? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, as of today, we're, we're in. So we'll see if there's a change in uh, what happens with uh, the process. Um, Mr. McCain said that the results will be invalidated by um, the app 
absence of him and Mr. Giuliani. Is that something that, that you might agree with, or are you, are you on the way to thinking in that manner? One of the things, obviously, we have to look for is uh, what will be the perception of the uh, results of the straw poll? Uh, will it matter in terms of how we place? Here's what's interesting. You have two candidates that the national media says uh, are the leaders, and they won't even play. And then you've got the other uh, candidate the national media says is a leader. He's already spiked the ball in the end zone and has declared victory for the straw poll when it hadn't even happened yet. So one of the things that the rest of us have to do is to evaluate, are we going to a game that's already been decided? Uh, is it going to be an honest, legitimate, and fair test of support, uh, having given, been given a chance to meet the candidates and make their decision? Will the voters be given that opportunity? And if it is, then it's a good, valid exercise. Uh, that Those are the kind of criteria we're looking for. So it's an interesting thing, and I'm sure it's interesting to the people of Iowa to see what's uh, happened. And, uh, I, I'm very disappointed, very disappointed in the McCain and Giuliani uh, campaigns for um, throwing a monkey wrench into the into the process because it would have been a I think a much more uh, important exercise to really show strength had they participated. What does it say about them not wanting to participate? Do you think that they're concerned about their showing? Uh, I'm going to have to leave it to you guys as to determine what it shows, but. Uh, I know generally people don't, if, if you're confident, if you're playing a game and you walk off the field before it starts, that's usually not an indication that you thought you were so strong that it wasn't worth playing. I'll put it that way. <laughs> there have been folks who have been reading your interview. Have you considered your interview with Marie Claire? I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name of that magazine. I don't either. I, I've, I've seen some print things about it. I'm not sure. Uh, and yeah. They're particularly interested in your comment about <laughs> if anyone reads that, they know that my tongue was planted firmly in the cheek. If anybody reads that and has anything other than a humorous reaction, they really should uh, get some serious therapy, get a life, and move on with some things. It's amazing to me. One of the reasons that I think many of us are frustrated in the whole process of electing a president is that out of three debates we've had nationally, we had not one question about education not one question about education. We had one question about health care. We didn't really get into the top, uh, any conversation in New Hampshire, one of the most uh, anti-tax states in the country, in a two-hour Republican debate, not one question about tax policy. And it really would help us all if we could start talking about the things that people talk about around the dinner table. And they're talking about the price of health care and getting it. They're talking about why two kids every 60 seconds are dropping out of school, and why millions of other kids sleep through their entire school day in the most expensive nap in America called an education system in which the kids are so bored uh, that they're not even awake for the classes that they're enrolled in. Uh, we really need to be talking about uh, alternative energy sources so that we're not dependent upon the Middle East. We need to be talking about why every time you squeeze the pump at the gas uh, station, you're making the Saudi royal family a little richer and your family a little poorer. And what are we going to do about it? And yet we get questions, you know, sometimes in these debates about uh, what we believe about uh, evolution, uh, or what we believe about pardoning Scooter Libby. And I would suggest that there wasn't a single family in America who sat at their dinner table during the night of the debate and said, gee, I wonder if the next president will pardon Scooter Libby. Gosh, I wonder what the next president would like to do about writing an eighth grade science textbook. So one thing that I look forward to in Iowa is getting uh, out in the 99 counties of this wonderful state and talking to real people about the real issues that they care about.